Oh, what's up, man? Not much. Not much. Just staying busy with the holidays. <laughs> I hear that. We're back for our second episode about the holiday season. And specifically, this episode is going to be how to efficiently work out during the holiday season. We did touch on this on the last episode about navigating the holidays. And if you guys haven't already checked out that episode, make sure you do. Uh, we touch on uh, training, nutrition, um, just some helpful tips that you guys can uh, use in order to navigate this time. So we're going to go a little bit more in depth than we did on the last episode. So we're going to be going through like what a workout might look like, talk about some techniques, maybe some different styles, um, basically how to make workouts more time efficient and still provide you uh, with results. So let us begin. We're going to, first of all, can you get results with less work and time spent in the gym? What would your answer be to that? Absolutely, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I think that we fall into thinking that unless we're giving it the full, full hour or whatever it may be, that there's you're getting less gains or you know zero gains, but that's just not the case. Yeah. Basically, it's a – I kind of like this to use this with clients. It's a, a minimalistic approach. So you're basically doing the least amount of work required – to get results mm -hmm. and it allows for recovery um, but it also allows us to progress to increase our volume and our effort down the road if we need to um, instead of already doing a ton of work and then people try to increase even more from there which is honestly not needed from a strength and health benefits it's pretty cool that research has shown us that we can do as little as one to four sets per week of a muscle group, chest, legs, whatever that is, and it's enough to make progress or even maintain what we already have, which is pretty incredible considering the amount of work you see some people do in the gym, spending two to three hours, five to six days a week, thinking they need to do all this work in order to make progress. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. And I mean, I fell into that in the past too, where you're trying to hit a muscle group three and four times a week, barely recovering. And I've seen those studies where if you go in and hit almost a max lift one time a week, you're at least going to maintain and m quite possibly grow and gain size. So that's, that's awesome. So, and again, yeah. too, the short season, if you're traveling for the holidays, it's not like you have to do these short workouts forever, but this goes back to what we touched on last time, something over nothing. And these little workouts are not a waste. They're going to keep pushing yeah. forward. Absolutely. I think we even talked about this in a text conversation. I think we were, ta we were talking about like uh, old Nautilus gyms uh, yep. to where the Nautilus gyms used to basically have like a bunch of machines lined up. You would kind of go in like a circuit style and you would just do the exercise once mm -hmm. to failure and then you'd leave and you were done. And that, believe it or not, is enough to even maintain or make progress. It's, I, I would say the caveat is that like with muscle building, it can be a little bit more tricky. Um, on average, 10 sets per week per muscle group is, you know, a good spot for most people. Uh, but the cool thing is we can make progress with less. Uh, but that percentage of like, let's say gains gets decreased. Uh, so let's say, you know, five to nine sets per week will basically get you 84% of the potential progress, which is honestly, it's still a lot. Uh, that's pretty incredible. And even as mentioned before, with the strength and health benefits, one to four sets will get you 64% of the potential progress, which is still a good amount of progress. Even with that, I will say though, that with less volume or less sets the intensity is going to need to be uh, increased uh, so sets need to be taken close to or to failure in order for you to get the most maximum results from that yeah so it's basically if you're going in let's say you do only get two sets what you're saying is if i go in i can do two sets of a leg press 
I wouldn't also want to dial back necessarily and only lift 30% of my max. Most likely I'd want to bring it up and lift closer to like 80 plus percent of my max. Yeah. Yeah. And take it, you know, take it as close to muscle failure as possible. Cause I think a lot of people underestimate how, what failure is to them. Yeah. Right. You know, like on a scale of one to 10, you know, how hard was that? Uh, it was a seven, but in reality it was like a four or right. a five, you know, whatever. So you know, being able to gauge what failure is to you and be able to hit closer to that. And really that is kind of the key for a lot of people. They don't need to do more work. They just need to increase the intensity of what they're already doing, right? Yep. And a little tip there, I, I always tell my clients, I think you do the same is pretty much whatever we prescribe, you wanna be within usually two reps of failure. So if I'm telling you to do 10 reps, you pick up a weight, you get to 10, but you could have done 15, you got to go heavier. So that's yeah. always a little guide to follow just within two reps of failure. That way you know you're pushing yourself almost to the end, but it's not dangerous. It's not to the point of the, the weight falling on you. Yeah, for sure. All right. We're going to go over this next part pretty quickly because we already covered this in the previous episode. Uh, so how to make your workouts more efficient. Let's just kind of alternate back and forth. Um, you can decrease the days that you work out. Go from six days a week, five days a week to two or three a week. All right. That is an option. Uh, second option. You know, decrease the time. So instead of going in for your hour long workouts, cut them back. I mean, like you said, we just need a few sets. So 10, 20 minutes is still going to be enough for you, but decrease the time that you're committing to that workout. Yep. Uh, decrease the sets. We've kind of already touched on that before talking about, you know, you don't necessarily have to do 10 sets of a muscle group. You can do one to four. Um, and be perfectly fine with that one to three sets per exercise. I would suggest you don't really need to do more than that. Um, it just takes up more of your time. And typically with more sets, the intensity gets to be decreased, you know, a little bit as there as well. So we want to maximize, uh, during this time, more intensity over the amount of work that we do. Yep. And yeah, that's basically the last point is like focus on the intensity during that time. <clears throat> You know, or you need to go heavier. You need to push yourself, you know, more to the limit, you know, increase the heart rate, go a little faster, cut down the rest time. How are you going to increase the intensity in that workout? That's how you're going to make this shorter workout more efficient for you and you still get benefits from it. Yeah. All right. Flew through that. We are now going to go talk about a little bit about training styles and some techniques that you guys can use in order to make those workouts more efficient uh, and they also can uh, some techniques that will increase the intensity for you as well once again we're just going to kind of take our turns and describe uh, each one. First one full body training i think it's pretty explanatory you hit uh, every muscle group within that workout uh, i would say the benefit to that is you don't have to do as many sets for sure. You could do one set, even two sets per muscle group, but yet you, your frequency throughout the week could be three, four days a week. So you could do three or four full body workouts a week, which is actually what I currently do with my training. I've wanted to um, lessen the amount of work within a workout, but just up the frequency to still get a decent amount of uh, sets in per week. Yep. And so we've got full body training. And the next one I would suggest would be go with a circuit style of training, circuit training. Yep. And that really means, you know, pick <clears throat> usually three or four exercises that you're going to go through a, in a faster fashion, honestly, less rest or almost no rest in between. So that could look like, you know, if you have no equipment, you're at home, you're going from push-ups straight over to your body weight squats, straight over to a timed plank and then maybe a mountain climber or something that gets the heart rate up, and then you repeat again. But it's more of that circuit style training. Yeah. Uh, great for those who travel, especially, you know, a lot of people who travel uh, frequently for business or even, you know, during this time, just get something short. This one kind of ties into circuit uh, training because the styles are very similar, um, but timed workouts. Mm. Specifically, we're talking about EMOMs and AMRAPs. EMOMs stand for every minute on the minute. Uh, so an example of that would be, let's say you have a 10 minute EMOM, 
So the workout is going to be 10 minutes. You're going to do goblet squats with a dumbbell, and then you're going to do body weight glute bridges on the floor, and you're going to do 10 reps of each. So in the first minute, you have one minute to complete the 10 reps of goblet squat. Let's say it takes you 15 seconds. You then have 45 seconds to rest before the top of the next minute when you need to start that second exercise, which would be the glute bridges. So you're just, it's kind of like built in rest within the minute. And the goal is not to speed through that minute as fast as you can, you know, in order to get more rest. Um, but it's a great way to just keep you moving and to keep you on track. The other style is AMRAP, which is every, or excuse me, as many rounds as possible. So kind of like with that circuit example that you gave, you could put a 15 minute timer on and just do as many rounds of those squats, planks, push-ups, mountain climbers within that 15 minutes. And you might get five, six, 10 rounds. And it's a great way to get a lot of work done in short amount of time. Yep. And I think it's really effective, especially during this time. Love it. Yeah. Great strategy. The next one I would actually suggest would be supersets or giant sets. Um, with supersets, this is basically putting together two exercises back to back with next to no rest in between. So supersetting typically will do like opposing muscle groups or upper and lower front and back. So that could be going from a goblet squat, working your legs, standing up and going into a shoulder press after you do 10 reps of squats. 10 reps of shoulder press, then you rest. That's superset. Or doing a chest exercise, maybe push ups, and then going to your back and doing inverted rows. That's front and back. Superset those, you get your rest at the end of each of those exercises. A giant set would just be adding a third exercise into that. And again, you're not taking much rest in between any of these. It's just the transition time to the next exercise. So, giant set, three exercises. So, you would go from your squats right over to your push-ups, right over to your inverted row, and then you take your break. 10 reps of each or whatever your rep scheme is, but then you're at least being more efficient with your time, which is what we're trying to do with these holiday or vacation style workouts. It's cutting down the time of rest in between, but you're still getting a lot of bang for your buck with getting all these exercises in. Yeah. Uh, second technique uh, that you guys can use, drop sets and triple drop sets. Uh, basically what you do in this, let's just take a, a leg press, uh, for example, let's say you have three plates on each side of the leg press, you do 10 reps, you then strip off one plate per side, and then you try and get another 10 or more reps in after that, that would be the drop set. And then you would rest after that, right? If you wanted to do another set after that, a triple drop. These I typically like to do for like arms, more isolation stuff, uh, as opposed to, you know, say like a compound, like a leg press or a chest press or something like that. Triple drop. Let's take, for example, bicep curls. Let's say you're doing dumbbell bicep curls. You do 10 reps at 25 pounds. You then dro drop the weight 20 pounds. You do 10 reps. Then you drop the weight again. 15 pounds and try to get another 10 reps. So we're basically what we're doing here with these techniques is just trying to squeeze a lot of volume into essentially one set. And, you know, with the triple drop set, you're, you're basically getting in three sets in one uh, with that technique. And my suggestion would be for drop sets, you could, you could do that with every exercise with compound and isolation, but with the triple drop, I would tend to do them more for the isolation movements just because of the fatigue factor piling up so quickly. It could be really taxing with something like a, a chest press or something that's, you know, more compound focus and just for safety reasons uh, as well. <clears throat> All right. So those were just some of the training styles and techniques. Now we're going to kind of put that all together and what would a workout look like for you? All right. So how could you put together a workout during this period? We're just going to use the full body example. 
let's say you do two, three days a week, full body every day. I would personally pick just one exercise for chest, back, and then maybe two legs. And you could split the legs up into like more of a quad focused exercise uh, and then more of a hamstring focused exercise. That's just a suggestion. You could do it however you wanted to. I would then maybe do two to three sets uh, each exercise with like, let's say two minutes of rest between sets. No more, because once again, we're trying to be time efficient uh, during this time. My suggestion with this would be, if you do two sets or less, take it to failure. Uh, if you do three, I would say the first two are taken close. Maybe leave, you know, two, three reps in the tank, but then take that last one uh, to failure, right? So we can still capitalize on the volume because if you are doing three sets and you hit failure on that first one, your fatigue is just going to add up and your performance could drop on the next two sets just because of that. So let's say all of that takes you 20 to 30 minutes. If you have the time, I kind of like to do this with my own clients. I think you mentioned that you do this as well. The last 10, maybe 15 minutes is, you know, player's choice. If you want to say they get to decide what you do for the last 10 to 15. This yeah. is where I would incorporate your isolation movements. Pick two or three exercises from arms, shoulders, you know, maybe some abs, calves for the ladies, all the banded glute stuff that you love to do. And this is where I would start to utilize, you know, the drop sets and giant sets and stuff like that. So you can just fit a lot into a smaller amount of time. Yeah, I, I do that with clients, especially one I'm thinking of is we kind of have this open discussion of going to give him what he needs or give him what he wants so you know we can give him what he needs so i know he wants to work out triceps so i always put that towards the end that's a motivator get to go in isolate you know crush the arms but before that we're taking care of the important stuff which is what you went over here the compound movements the squats the bench press deadlifts big lifts hitting the larger muscle groups yeah i mean the, the whole idea is just being time efficient and getting the most out of these workouts as we possibly can um, I will say this episode is going to be dropping Monday, the 28th of November. Be on the lookout on both of our Instagrams because we are going to be dropping some reels of workouts that we did over the holidays um, with these types of examples that we just given you, you know, the different styles, the different techniques. Um, and we're going to be doing that just throughout the week. So you guys have a few examples of like, these types of workouts and what they might look like. You could even copy them and do the exact same workout up to you. Um, but just to provide you guys with some value. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. I think we've pretty much covered everything. This is a short episode, but it was intended to be any closing remarks uh, before we go. No, I mean, it's good. Use these workouts, use these uh, examples as far as the styles, the full body training, circuit training, timed workouts, supersets, drop sets. Figure out now what you're going to use whenever you hit that busy season or that busy week so that you actually have a plan whenever you go into it and, you know, you're able to get a workout in. Yep. All right. Before we close, uh, once again, if you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast. You can go to Apple Podcasts or Spotify or whatever you use. Look up The Perfect Fit Podcast. Uh, the last episode that we did was on navigating the holidays. We did touch on training a little bit but we wanted to dive into uh, it a little bit more in this episode. The next episode, little teaser before we go. Why do diets fail? And why do so many people regain the weight that they lost after they diet? Should be a fun topic, a very important topic for a lot of people. And uh, one that I hope that you will get a lot of info from. Go ahead, plug anything that you are doing right now, socials, et cetera. Yeah, uh, Instagram, going to be Coach Cure. Find me over there. Um, look, at, look. Oh, sorry, keep an eye out for those workout posts dropping here on the week of the 28th. 
Um, and same thing over on TikTok. It's going to be Cure Fitness. And I'll try to post some workouts there for you guys to take through the holidays as well. Yep. And uh, my Instagram is Craig Richards PT. And most of my stuff is being posted on there. Once again, thank you guys for joining us. And we will see you next time.